Tonight, bear witness to the greatest David vs. Goliath story of all time. Andre the Giant, the immovable object, stares down Caristico. While small in stature, Caristico is no small on heart. The Mexican Lucha Libre legend has met and defeated his fair share of larger opponents. But can he do it again against the greatest big man of all time? Can Caristico climb the mountain and do the other? Will this David vs. Goliath fantasy end in celebration and display of what willpower can accomplish? Or will it end in heartbreak and tragedy for Lucha Libre fans around the world? It's Andre the Giant vs. Caristico, tonight. Welcome everybody to night number three of the Book of Better, greatest of all time, Tourney, the Tourney of the Goats. Tonight we welcome to the ring Andre the Giant to take on Mexican Lucha Libre legend Caristico. In match number two, our main event of the evening, Kurt Angle will go one-on-one -on -one with Triple H. That could be the greatest, that could be the best match of the tournament, frankly. Uh, we see Andre in the ring, here comes Caristico. I'm going to turn it over to, to my good friend, my, uh, my my partner here, Matt Whitman. Matt, tell me what's going to happen today. Well, I'll tell you what, Maxie, here's what's going to happen tonight. Andre the Giant's going to control the tempo of this match. He's going to send Caristico flying around the ring, i tell you what. He's going to hammer him left and right. Caristico doesn't stand a chance, Max. He doesn't stand a chance. Andre's too strong. He's too big. I don't care how fast you are. I don't care how fast, how athletic, how flippy flippy you are. You can't. You can't use flippy flippy and speed against somebody as big as Andre the Giant. Andre's like a bear in there, Max. He's like a bear. Well, I think you might be right there, Matt. Uh, you may be right there as Caristico hits a, a couple of chops here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you may be right. Andre, uh, clearly the largest athlete in the tournament. Um... And we'll see. I mean, we'll see uh, uh, how things go for uh, for for Caristico here. But um, I can't see this going well for him. Uh, he's got to use his speed, like you said. He's got to use his speed. Uh, he's got to be quick. Um, but sometimes, with a guy as big as Andre, he just can cut the ring off um, and make it very difficult to use that speed. Just because he seems to be he seems to be everywhere. It doesn't seem to matter how fast you are. He seems to still be there. It's just because of his sheer size. Uh, he just takes up that much space in the ring. Oh, Carisco rolls him up. Carisco, well, if he's going to win, that's how it's going to be. He's going to have to steal one. I tell you, I'd be surprised if Carisco wins this match. No, up, no real upsets so far in our first two episodes. And I think Carisco... Caristico upsetting Andre the Giant would probably be the upset of a lifetime. Hammering him with the headbutts. But Andre didn't get that many votes to win this thing, and I was actually surprised. Um, Andre, <laughs> we get a little bit of a slap fight here. Now, I was surprised Andre didn't get more votes to win this thing. Um, as Kersko hits a snapmare. Uh, but the same was true for Hogan. Hogan didn't get many votes either. Uh, I feel, feel like for Hogan, though, it was more be just because he had Daniel Bryan in the first round. Uh, and so you just, you get the, uh, you get kind of split between Hogan and Bryan. Uh, there's a cover sitting on his face. Uh, you get Hogan, you get people split between Hogan and Bryan, so... Rolling up again. Not even a one count, though. Um, <laughs> what is that pin? Um, uh, you get the people split between Hogan and Bryan. But with, for Andre, Andre's path, I mean, I, I can't imagine he struggles with Caristico here. And so far, he has not. I mean, Andre is manhandling Caristico. Sitting on his face yet again. Just with the sheer bear hug, gets the curse and gets the rope break. Thank God. Oh, the big giant! Just that palm. This is the size of his hand is the size of Caristico's head. Well, this has been all Andre. Uh, honestly, frankly, about what I expected here. Uh, I tell you what, the Lucha Libre legends—they they sort of caught a bad rap because they end up facing. Uh, Caristico gets Andre. 
I think Blue Demon gets Big Show. Uh, so really a, a um, kind of a tough luck draw for those guys. Uh, you got the smallest competitors in the in the tournament going up against some of the biggest competitors. Uh, Carisco hits the drop kick, but Andre's going to no sell it. Yeah, this match is going to be over soon. I can feel it. Andre, there's the elbow. That could do it. One, two, two point nine. Andre drops the elbow. Carisco hanging in there. That's not going to make Andre very happy. Oh, and an Insiguri. Oh, it goes the elbow. Yep, there it is. That could do it. One, two, and three. Got him. Andre picks up the victory. About what I would have expected. I don't think anybody was expecting anything different on that one. Um, Andre the Giant's going to pick up the win here. Uh, over Caristico in our first match. So Andre will advance, folks. Andre moving on. Match scores a 71. Uh, 8 minutes, 21 seconds with a drop toe hold. In a continuation of one of the most storied rivalries of all time, Triple H meets one-on-one -on -one with the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Is it the game's night tonight, or will he limp away with a broken ankle, ankle like so many have done before? Will a prime Triple H lay waste to the Olympian and prove once again why his reign of terror solidified him as King of Kings? Can Kurt Angle lock in the ankle lock, or will it be the Olympic slam? A multiple-time world champion and the only Olympic gold medalist to win the WWE Championship. Can Kurt Angle add GOAT to his list of accomplishments? Find out now. Here we go, folks. Match number two, our main event of the evening. Uh, I'm going to go on record. I will say it here that this could be the highest-rated match of the tournament. You could get the game, Triple H versus the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. This one could be... Uh, could be the best match of the tournament. Uh, I was actually really excited when I saw this. Um, when I saw that this was going to be uh, early on in the in the tournament, uh, a first round matchup. Um, you know, I want the I, you like the late tournament. Um, uh, excuse me, it's early in the morning here. We're yawning a little bit. Very very early in the morning. Here. Excuse me. Um, uh, I like the late the late tournament drama. And having the, the really like the, the, the high level matches late in the tournament. Uh, but there's also something really exciting about having a match like this, Triple H versus Angle, uh, early on in the tournament in that first round. Um, there's just something about it that like that makes it feel like at any given moment you could have a major like classic match on your hands. It's really one of the best things. It's really what you, what you look for when you're putting together a tournament of the greatest of all time. Um, is to have that uh, that that kind of big match feel in almost every match. <clears throat> you know, I'm sure there are a lot of there are a lot of Caristico Lucha Libre fans that you know that 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 groan when you see uh, Caristico drew Andre the Giant first, uh, and that was pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to be was just uh, I mean Andre just mauling him, you know. Um, you know, but but you'll also get these kind of matches here where it's it's not such a dead giveaway. You know uh, who that winner's going to be. I mean, it's really, really hard to predict Angle or Triple H here. Let me see who, who did I predict in this. Let me check my, uh, let me check my my prediction here. What was my prediction? I predicted. How am I doing actually so far? So let me see. So I predicted Hogan over Daniel Bryan. I was right. I predicted Ricky Choshu over Gory Guerrero. I was right. Uh, I had Kota Ibushi beating Antonio Inoki. I was wrong about that one. Uh, I had Bruno beating Sasuke. So I'm I'm three for four so far. Actually, I had Andre over Caristico as well. So I'm I'm four for five. I have Triple H winning this match. So I've got Triple H in this one. So see how uh, how I come out. See how I come out of this one. Um, honestly, I'm just hoping for a good match, and I think we're gonna get it. 
I debated using fat bloated Triple H for this one. I was debating which 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 version of Triple H that I want. Because uh, you can make an argument that bloated Triple H, like circa 2004 Triple H, was peak Triple H. It's, you know, I, I always make the jokes and I laugh at, at fat Triple H because um, there are some really there are some really entertaining pictures of fat Triple H uh, from around the the early 2000s. Uh, but you can also argue that that was I mean, that was the reign of terror. We get a cover here. That's not going to do it. No, not a chance. Um, that 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 was. I mean, he was at his peak. Uh, you know, in terms of his his pull within the company and his power in the company, and um, you know, when he was a little on the bloated side. So I debated using it. Was that a low blow? I debated using that. I also debated using current Triple H. I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, the best shape. Oh, an uh, uh, Olympic slam out of the ring. Olympic slam out of the ring, and now the brawl spills to the outside. Triple H is going to work the work the head on the outside, work that headlock right out here in front of our announce tables. Oh, and a DDT on the floor. This match is getting ugly. We get a double count out here. We're going to get a double count out. Oh, both men back in the ring at 18. Both men back in the ring at 18. So I I'm glad that wasn't a double count out because just from a from an out of character standpoint, uh, I haven't really decided how I'm going to handle double count outs if they happen. Um, obviously, a count out victory will be a victory. Uh, a disqualification victory will be a victory. Uh, those are easy, uh, but a double count out. Uh, I don't, I'm assuming, I mean, I think the only real logic, the only, there's only two options, frankly. Uh, Angle rolls him up, almost stole one. Uh, there, there's really only two options. Oh, pedigree! Oh, pedigree! That could do it, folks. One, two, and three! Oh, 2.9! 2.9! Uh, Triple H running right through current angle there. Uh, anyway, excuse me again. Uh, anyway, um, there's only really two options, right? So option number one uh, would be to just restart the match, right? Uh, obviously, the only matches that are live, the only matches that are going up live would be the semifinals and the finals. So the option to restart the match and re-record it is there. Uh I really don't like to do that, though. I like to let, I want the tournament to play out the way it's going to play out. Um, you know, I don't want to restart because there's an upset or something. I want it to play out the way it's going to play out. Uh, so the only other option uh, would be to just eliminate both both workers. So you get a double count out or a double DQ, uh, both workers get eliminated. I suppose I could also turn off the ring out count. Um, I could just turn the 20 count off. Uh, and then I don't have to worry about it. Um, Triple H calling for another pedigree here. Nope, reverse of the German suplex. And no sold by Triple Jesus. Not, not even attempting to sell it. Um, I don't, I don't really want to turn off that twenty count, but I could. Um, ooh, what a pile driver. Uh, so I don't know. I haven't really quite decided uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to hope that it doesn't happen. Um, but I think most likely, uh, if we get a double count out, uh, most likely situation is going to be to eliminate both guys. And the problem with that is what happens if it happens in, like, the quarterfinal, and now somebody gets to skip the semifinal match. You know, just go from the quarterfinals right on to the finals. I don't know if I really want to do that. Um, but we'll kind of just play it by ear, and if it happens, it happens. We'll figure it out. Um, it's not likely that it's going to happen, uh, but if it does, um, if it does, we'll have to deal with it. Two point nine now. Almost got the win.
Angle starting to work that ankle. Triple H able to get to the ropes. We're going to have an exchange here. With the right, with the left, with the right, with the left. And big clothesline. Triple H, you can see, starting to tire. Oh, rolls him up. Oh, get in position, ref. Two and two. Oh, 2.9. The referee out of position there. Took him a long time. Took him a long time to get into position and start that count. And it may have just cost Kurt Angle the match. Angle had the roll up and, in my opinion, had the three count. Had the three count. The referee was on the complete other side of the ring. Took a long time to get into position. And ends up being just a 2.9 count. Oh, the hanging vertical suplex plants him. Oh, and the ankle lock. Got it locked up. Triple H may have to tap here. Triple H may have to tap. Oh, he's going to break it. Triple H is no selling. Oh, he steals his finisher. Oh, Kurt Angle hits the pedigree. Angle hits the pedigree. Oh, and it's oh, another 2.9 count. Another 2.9 for Angle. Triple H needs to be very careful. That is now the third time. The third time that he has been... Oh! All the way out of the ring! All the way German suplex throws Triple H clean out of the ring. Angle's going to chase after him. Not looking for a count-out victory here. The two men trying to lock up. Can't. Angle ends up grounding him. Oh, and a rake in the eyes. Back suplex. Well, we may get a double count out right here. And just on 18, Angle able to roll back in. Triple H now dragging to the center of the ring. Triple H calling for it, calling for a pedigree here. Is the running clothesline. Plants him with the clothesline. Angle, Angle with another German suplex. To the top rope now, Angle. And a moon standing moonsault from the top rope onto a standing Triple H. Triple H is Triple H may be out on his feet here. Looks on oh, a back elbow. To the rear, another back elbow. And a drop kick taking out the knee of Triple H. At the 20 minute mark now, folks. 20 minutes, both men tired. Oh, here goes. Oh, pedigree. Pedigree. Hits it, goes for the cover. One, two, and three. Got him. Angle attempts to get the kick out in, but it's too late. Triple H is going to pull off the victory. Triple H will get the victory here, folks, with the pedigree at 20 minutes and 28 seconds. And we'll move on to face Andre the Giant. A 100-rated match, as I expected. Folks, that's going to do it for tonight. Join me tomorrow for night number four. Don't miss it. Ricky Dozan, the father of Puro Resso, takes on Shinya Hashimoto. And Harley Race taking on Eddie Guerrero. Be there or be square. Folks, I will see you tomorrow night.